Hi, this is G from Native Speakers Academy, and welcome to another edition of 10 Minute English. This is where we introduce short articles in English from recent news or from around the internet, and these are for upper intermediate and advanced level students. That is usually except for today. Today is a special presentation for advanced students only. For advanced students only. And what are we going to be looking at? Well, sometimes we deal with light subjects, sometimes we deal with heavy subjects. This is the latter. This is a truly heavy subject. Now, on the screen in front of you, you should be able to see the article on the right side. A truly monstrous medicine. What are we going to be talking about? You will find out very soon. But before we get into the article, which is a long article today, so it's going to take us a little more time to get through it, but I think it's important. There's a message that I want to get across to you. Before we look at the article, as usual, I would like to remind you that you can explore the work that we do here at Native Speakers Academy by visiting our homepage, nsa-slovakia.com. Our most recent research article is visible on the front page there, an introduction to Austrian economic theory. And on the right side of the page, you can visit our YouTube channel now with over 82,000 views, which I'm quite happy with for an educational page. You can also link to us on Pinterest, where we have 13 different boards related to a variety of educational, societal, philosophical issues, or you can explore the pins individually. We now have over 3,000 there. Here are some business infographics that we have posted recently. But because we have a little bit of a lack of time today, we're going to get into our article as quickly as we can. There is a lot, a lot of vocabulary which might be new to students so be prepared to make notes as we go through i think that's probably the best way to do it we'll get through this together and then you can check back on any vocabulary you are not sure about when we finish as usual i recommend typing into google define followed by the um the word that you are looking for which i have <laughs> misspelt. <laughs> Let's get it right. There we go. Uh, uh, it's a word from the title of the article. Uh, monstrous. Monstrous. Having the ugly or frightening appearance of a monster. You know, somebody once told me that the word monster was a conjunction of the idea of moon, as in mon, as in Monday, moon day, and star, as in the star in the stars and planets in the sky. But according to this, there is very little to show that that is true. You can also check the online etymology dictionary where it says monster derived from Latin monstrum, divine omen, sign repulsive character. Also, the same root of monitor. That's interesting. Um, one who reminds, admonishes, checks, an overseer, an instructor. I wonder if the term monitor that we use with, for example, computer, computers could be a two-way concept in the sense of who is watching who, who is monitoring who. Anyway, that was just something to think about. We need to dive headfirst 
into our article today so if you are sitting comfortably then we will begin a truly monstrous medicine china's gruesome human baby flesh pills by steve bird now the origin of this is uh, the daily mail newspaper and um, you can see the original on the left a link to that will be posted together with the article now I thought about editing the article but I couldn't take anything out of any paragraph because it was all important so this is it here we go kneeling down in her cramped kitchen the pharmacist opens her fridge door and removes the freezer compartment drawer crammed with three packages wrapped in black bin liners as she carefully opens the brittle bundles she boasts of her ability to use the contents to make a pill that can cure all known ills after taking two tablets a day, you will feel the difference after just one week, she says. Even though the parcels are frozen, they exude an unpleasant smell that quickly permeates her nondescript apartment in a small northern Chinese town. But pushing the plastic freezer box across the floor to her newfound customer, the woman who works at a Chinese hospital appears almost proud as she says, Choose one, please. Choose one. Each of the bags contains a single aborted fetus. One of them is said to be of seven months gestation. The infant's remains will be cut up into small pieces, dried, microwaved, and then ground down into a coarse powder to be made into tablets of an alternative medicine that plays on centuries-old superstitions and folklore. I'm going to try not to make any personal comments. I think the article speaks for itself. Each tablet containing the infant's flesh and bone and possibly hair and nails are believed by many to have fantastic healing powers which fight the ravages of aging and are capable of defeating even cancer. It's a sickening cannibalistic and illegal trade that the Chinese authorities do not want the world to know exists. Yet, it is disturbingly widespread. This week, the South Korean's Customs Department revealed it had foiled 35 attempts to smuggle these human flesh pills across its border and seized more than 17,000 of them from China in just nine months. The contraband was either taken into the country in passengers' luggage or posted in parcels registered as traditional Chinese herbal medicines. This grotesquely unsavory industry appears to cash in on China's strict family planning laws, which limit most families to just one child each and are said to result in 13 million abortions a year. 13 million abortions a year, the equivalent of more than 35,000 terminations a day. The country, which has a population of more than 1.3 billion, is said to have dying rooms in hospitals where unwanted newborn babies are abandoned to perish. Those trying to avoid a huge fine for violating the one-child laws have been known to commit outright infanticide, as well as suicide, and there are also mobile abortion 
vans that they drive around. Now, unscrupulous pharmacists, hospital workers, and even the relatives of those having abortions are making money from archaic beliefs that consuming infant cells can cure and rejuvenate us. This bizarre notion dates back hundreds of years to China's Ming Dynasty and the belief that and the belief if that the nearer the fetus is to the birth date, the more healing properties it harbors. Does that sentence make sense? And the belief if that the nearer the fetus is to the birth date, the more healing properties it harbors. If we take out if, let's, let's do a bit of online editing, and the belief that the nearer the fetus is to its birth date, the more healing properties it harbors. Mm, yeah, I think there was an extra word there. The true extent of the trade in China's human flesh pills emerged when an undercover team from South Korea's SBS television channel highlighted the problem. The footage taken by the team showed how placentas, the most common form of illegal human flesh traded in China for alternative medicine, are sold alongside the dried organs of creatures including snakes and bats from around the world to satisfy an appetite for powders, soups and potions said to have tremendous healing properties. Do you know what's in your soup? I wonder if that's why they... never mind. Let's continue. It also reveals how herb clinics or chemists in northern Chinese towns, including... <laughs> I can't pronounce these names. Town 1, Town 2, Town 3 and Town 4 sell pills made from human fetuses. Sickly film footage shows a pharmacist wearing pristine white overalls and one chemist admitting that she stocks human flesh capsules. There was a film... Was it in the 70s? Soliant Green was the name of the film where they made food from dead people. Interesting science fiction. <laughs> it's fact now, isn't it? <laughs> it was a dystopic horror movie, and now we're living in it. She is filmed in a room containing huge wooden cabinets with row after row of small rectangular drawers containing drugs and rare herbs. And at one point she stands up on tiptoe to reach a top shelf where she pulled down a hidden bag of red and yellow capsules. There's a grammar thing going on there again as well, isn't there? And at one point she stands where she pulled. She, they use the present form here and then the past here. This should be present, present, shouldn't it? Okay. She opens up a pill, agrees that the contents give off a bad smell, and then explains that the fetus that made this batch of tablets was nearly seven months old before its life was terminated. It's the soulless feeding on the souls of the unborn. This is the world that we live in. This is the world that we have made. They were made recently, she says. They're really good for you. Uh, take it twice a day. Don't take too much, otherwise you will get a nosebleed. 
After agreeing the sale with an undercover reporter, she decants the tablets into a pillbox marked with a prescription label for back pain. Later, another shopkeeper advises patients to take the pills only during colder months to avoid sweating out their health benefits. Monstrous. The respect for human life seems to have been completely bypassed as this Chinese pharmacist makes up fetus pills. As <laughs> it seems to have been. Seems to have been. It's been completely bypassed. What they fail to explain, quite apart from the appalling moral issues raised, is uh, how dangerous, it's just how dangerous swallowing the powdered flesh of another human being can be. Tests on tablets seized recently by South Korean border control officers found the contents of some were made up of the DNA from three human fetuses. The television crew discovered that the makeup of the pills they bought were between 97% and 99% human. And they all contained high levels of harmful bacteria, many of them a type that could only have come from decomposing bodies. According to ancient oriental lore, material from babies or fetuses contains life-giving human properties inherent only in such young cells. There is a, an interesting history of crazy European royals who actually ate people. There was, a, there was a book written about it recently as well. Um, well, I do a Google search for um, royals dined on people. You will probably find a link to it. They, the the pills are credited with boosting stamina for the frail and old, as well as improving sexual performance. They are also said to help those suffering respiratory problems or lung disease. While the trade in such drugs is thought to be more frequent in communist China, smugglers see the capitalist state of South Korea mm, as an increasing lucrative market. Pills that were once sold for as little as 50p 50 pence are believed to be fetching up to 25 pounds among the population of China's affluent near neighbor. Are you still with me? I hope so. The pills used to be shipped to South Korea blazingly in clear plastic cellophane bags. Oh, I missed highlighting that. But more recently, smugglers have had to become increasingly sophisticated and use orthodox dark brown pill bottles with sealed caps and labelled with the names of legitimate drugs or more traditional Chinese herbal medicines to evade detection. Ground-up aromatic herbs have also been added to the capsules to try to disguise the smell of what is, to all Intense and purpose rotting dried flesh. The frozen raw ingredients, a euphemism for freeze dried human flesh, are also for sale. A single fetus fetches hundreds of pounds because it can be processed into so many tablets with a far more lucrative street value. An entire placenta sells for about 100 pounds. Perhaps the most distressing element of this horrifying trade is the pitiless nature of the manufacturing process. During the undercover filming last year, the SBS journalists saw how a fetus could be turned into pills in just two days. <sighs> Once the hospital pharmacist had defrosted the fetus stored in her kitchen fridge, she cut it into manageable pieces. Overnight, she dried it out on absorbent paper before slowly microwaving, uh, uh, microwaving it on a low heat. According to the undercover 
steam, the smell at the stage was overpowering. Hair and nails were discernible in the human material. Once it was thoroughly dried, the pharmacist placed the flesh in a herbal grinder not unlike a kitchen food processor to render it down to a coarse light brown powder similar to the texture of human ashes following a cremation. The powder would then be put into soluble capsules which were counted out into bags for packing, shipment and sale. Those who have sold or taken such pills speak remarkably candidly to the television team about the perceived effects of the tablets. We're almost there. Take a break if you need to. Let's continue. A Korean woman living in China explained how she had given her son the pills because he had a lung problem. She says the hospital had said they couldn't help. My child took the capsules for one month and he got better. Perhaps it was just avoiding the hospital that helped. A small trader at a market in Seoul, South Korea adds, a couple of years ago, we took them many times. When we ran out, I contacted my son living in northeast China who posted them to us. Oh God. At that time, she was paying just about 50p per tablet and would get them shipped to her in batches of 100 or 120. She adds, it's really good medicine. You will be jumping around because you will be so full of energy. Alternatively, you could just drink a can of Red Bull and who knows what's in that. But the pills are now expensive. Another woman had so much faith in the treatment that she bought a fetus on the black market and ground it down to make her own tablets. I would get it raw, cut it, burn it and powder it, she says, adding it is widely known that it's very good for you. Interesting phrase, widely known. Doesn't mean that it is. Modern research has shown all such health claims to be baseless. Well, that's not true, because if you look at the company that provides the flavouring for Pepsi drinks, you will find a very interesting ingredient that is used in those soft drinks. And not just in those drinks either. Beware of some of those ice teas. Indeed, far from being curative, the pills are far more likely to be poisonous. Earlier this week, China's Ministry of Health spokesman, not going to pronounce that, said his officers would investigate reports of the trade, but said no proof that such capsules were being manufactured had yet to be presented to him. <laughs> Unless we say it exists, it doesn't exist. Last night, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman refused to comment on the South Korean customs findings or the investigation by the television journalists. They are probably all on those pills. But Professor Dala Yang of the University of Chicago's Beijing School, did you know the University of Chicago had a school in Beijing? said that while there had been a concerted effort by Chinese authorities to tighten up food standards, traditional medicines had been largely overlooked. Ah, so the solution is to tighten standards on traditional and natural medicines, not to actually stop people grinding babies into pulp and selling them after microwaving them, of course. The traditional Chinese medicine sector has been under-regulated. Uh -huh. And this is because there has always been a claim by the manufacturers that their medicines contain a secret ingredient, but they refuse to offer details, he says. If it's natural, why does, why does it need to be secret? Why can't they just write on it what it is? Because it's psychological, that's why. Not logical, psychological. Professor Yang believes the practice of using human flesh pills in pills exists, but is probably quite rare. <laughs> probably. No idea. Historically, 
historically in traditional Chinese medicine. The placenta has been used, he said. If aborted babies have been used in this instance, I would say that it is an isolated case. Regulation of such drugs in China is a work in progress. Mm -hmm. There have been improvements, but at the same time, because of the size of the industry, we do come across bad practices. Clearly, if true, the claims by South Korean customers would suggest the trade is rather more widespread and the concern in the months to come will be just how seriously the Chinese authorities take allegations for. It is a state that does not take kindly to criticism. The source is uh, the Daily Mail. A link will be added online. My thoughts and notes are very, very simple. Who would do this? Who would do this? What kind of person? Who could do this? What kind of person? Is this the world that we created? Is this the world that we want? It's not the world that I want. And what are you eating in those pills? Those pills those pills from your doctor do you even know <laughs> does the doctor even know uh, uh, have you read the label probably not blind faith blind faith good luck <laughs> trust but verify a truly monstrous medicine so the original article was taken from the Daily Mail, but the horror doesn't end here. You may also wish to have a look at the BBC article about China entitled Beijing's, well, special, very special restaurant. And in addition to that, the Seoul Times published a very interesting article with a lot of pictures that I'm not going to show you but the text at the beginning reads some Chinese people are known to be eating babies and the news which has been circulating through the internet and via email is shocking the world an email report received by the Seoul Times confirmed that news with several vivid and appalling pictures of human embryos and fetuses being made into a soup for human consumption. The report went on. A town in the southern province of Canton is now in focus. Chinese folks there are enjoying baby herbal soup to increase overall health and stamina. And so on. I'm not going to show you the picture. The United Nations has declared the 21st century that we live in, the century of China. As it declared the 20th century, the century of the United States and the 18th century, the century of uh, the British Empire. Do we really want to follow these countries' habits? Well, I guess they can't all be bad, but I hope I have given you something to think about. We've gone way over the time limit for today. Links to the article and anything else relevant will be posted together with the video. Please give us some feedback if this was what you were looking for or not. You can also keep in mind that we offer free HD Skype consultations for students, teachers, and companies. So if you are not sure about which exam you need to take, if it's IELTS or TEFL, or you want to do one of the Cambridge certificates, then get in touch with us. We can help you and prepare you for it. If you would need some advice about uh, teaching grammar to different age groups or practical tips for the classroom, we can probably help you with that. And if you want to know how to increase your firm's effectiveness through
through using professional language. We can also give you some advice on that. Just send us an email if you'd like some more information. This is all that we've had. <laughs> this is all that we have time for today and I've gone way over the 10 minutes. I apologize for that. A shorter, simpler article will be the next thing that we look at. I wish you a good day wherever you are. Goodbye for now and uh, remember you can check us out at our homepage or um, on YouTube or on Facebook or Google Plus or LinkedIn or Pinterest. You know how it works. Take care.